All right, so this video is probably going to be long no matter what I tried to do. There's a lot going on here. Um, I'm going to start with the, this page to just explain um, you a few things. Um, nearly all the problems involve these things, things called ice tables. So that stands for initial uh, change in equilibrium. And you're usually getting some information at the beginning of the problem. Um, about different concentrations. Um, so this one specifically says like uh, the beginning concentrations for A and B here and the equilibrium for 4C. That's when um, the equation kind of stops, like it's going back and forth at the same speed. Um, so what's important here is how we set up the um, equilibrium constant. Now there's there's two different ones. There's um, KC and KP. They look exactly the same, except for um, I believe in the the equations, I was kind of writing them both the same, but they're supposed to write them a little bit different. Like, yeah, it's actually explained it in 7.3. They kind of show you how to set those up. Um, so note that here, this represents the right side of the equation. So that's your 4C. So that 4 becomes an exponent. A doesn't have an exponent, but the B here has an exponent of 2. All right, so if you want to look at how to set those up a little more, that's uh, that's section 7.3, the first page. Let's see here. Um, all right, so I had to fill in the rest of this. So given that they, they give you equilibrium concentration here, they don't say anything about the beginning. If, the, if they leave out a piece of information like that, you just want to put zero. That's why the zero is here. So you had to add this amount to get to this. Now, um, based upon what was added here, we could figure out what's subtracted on the left side based on the coefficients. So if you look at these numbers, getting from this one to this one, it was just divided by four. And to get from this one to this one, it was divided by two. So it's like a lot of multiples and then stuff here. What I wanna say about that one. Um, now, some of these, as you begin to fill it out, there's a lot of information we don't know, so those get left as variables. So this one, they give you initial concentrations here. I don't think they say anything about this, so they just, you have a zero. Now we have minus x and minus x. That's because we started with some amount of concentrations here. Um, so it's always gonna be moving in the opposite direction. Like the more you add to the left side of the equation, the more it's going to move to the right. So that's why you have the subtraction and you had the plus X here. You would need to adjust those if you had some kind of um, coefficient. Like if this here was like 2AB instead, this would be a uh, plus 2X. Now, uh, how to solve these. So you have two different ways, a standard way and the assumption based. I kind of avoided this because that doesn't always work out. Um, and in fact, with a lot of these, I was kind of doing off to the side and it wasn't, um, wasn't working out well. Um, with this way here, there's a few different ways you could solve that. One is like you manipulate around using um, the quadratic formula, but that takes a lot of time. So um, your teacher here is encouraging you uh, solve by graphing. So what you would do is just put um, this whole statement in a graph for like y equals just, just this part right here. And another y equals could be that number. So you'll see that in, in the you do's in a little bit. The assumption what they're talking about is that um, we can kind of simplify this equation by getting rid of the x's on the bottom. And a lot of times that gets you something really close. Like this number here is pretty close to this one. So the assumption was good. But I wouldn't do that unless like you're specifically asked to because you don't know if it's going to work out well. And for a lot of these are asking for some kind of concentration in the end. And so whatever value you get for x, you just uh, stick it back in these expressions. The yeah, I'll skip that. I'll skip this here. Um, all right, so let's go down to the you do's. All right, so here's the order I did this in. So first of all, I, I set up an expression for your KP. 
because they're giving you a KP here. And so this on the top, the top is always the right side of the equation and the, the bottom is the left side. And this two right here comes from the coefficient. Those were the things I was saying, like seven, seven, three explains the setup. So um, this is the ice table, initial change equilibrium. And we just have the uh, two things here. We're given an initial concentration, not concentration, but pressure right here. Right, so I put that on this side. And they didn't tell me anything about the uh, the product, so I put a zero there. If you're missing information, you just put a zero. So since there's more on the left side, it's going to start moving to the right, which means we're going to be losing this. We're going to be losing NX, whatever amount that is. And we're going to be gaining 2x because of the coefficient. Then what you do is you add these two together right, to get this statement. And you add 0 plus 2x to get 2x. Once it's all set up, you use the equilibrium expressions to change this right here. Okay, so I'm putting the 2x in here. And then the expression for the left down there. I started solving this because I forgot that, you know, we're going to be using the graph and calculator, but you could kind of see how it's a quadratic, like you can solve it, but it's, it's a pain to do that. I also put that the assumption base for this one doesn't work. It, it's not close enough to the actual answer. So I want to talk about how I got this X here. So I'm just going to, Bring up the uh, thing I was graphed before. Sorry, this is a lot of switching back and forth, finding stuff. So I uh, I chose to make two graphs here. Um, I, I put y equals here because I, if I, I just put 0.36 before, it didn't work. So I discovered that with Desmos, you have to do that. But you could use a graphing calculator and you could use like um, the second calc button and find the intersection. I like this one though, because you can just kind of mouse over it. So there's the X value right there where they meet. You notice they meet back here too, um, but that solution doesn't make sense because it's negative. So we're going to see a few graphs that have um, more than one answer, but um, so you have to determine which one works. All right, so once I found that X value with the grapher, you want to plug it back into the equilibrium expressions. So this um, 0 0.055 minus x, I plug in the x value and got this for the pressure. And this was two times x, so I multiplied two times the x value to get the, the pressure for the right side. And that one's done because they're just asking for the pressures. Okay, this is number two. Um, let's see what this says here. All right, so the two A squared S that's on the left side, and these two are on the right side. So they give you initial concentration and they don't tell you about these. So it's going to put zero there. Okay, as for the KP expression, these two are on the right side. So they're on the top. This is on the left side. So it's on the bottom, this one. And the exponents come from the coefficients in the equation. 
you could see that with the change, these ones uh, match the coefficients. You're losing some from the reactants and gaining some on the products. It's not always like that. It depends on what you're starting with. So this one started with some re reactants. So therefore you're gonna lose that. That's why it's minus two X. And you're gonna be gaining the products. So you have plus there. So I took these equilibrium expressions and just stuck it right here. And right after that, I put in the grapher. I had to zoom like way in for this one. Anyway, you, you could see the pictures. Right, so once I found the X for the intersection, um, I guess this one was only asking for, yeah, it only wanted the H2 and S2. All right, so just, just this one and this one. I didn't want the other one. Now, the thing I'm confused about is she's asking for equilibrium concentrations, which you could definitely find. Um, it just seems like a lot of work, so I don't know like if she intended to write that. Uh, but I believe how you would find that is by using the ideal gas law, because they're dealing with all gases here. So that's PV equals NRT. If you manipulate it around, if you divide by the V and divide by the RT, you get this. And N over V, that's moles per liter. That's that's molarity. So molarity is concentration. So N, N over V is the same thing as capital M. And you would plug in all the information and give you um, what we solved for this one. We solved for the pressure. This, I had to look this one up. Um, you've used that in the past. Um, that's the ideal gas constant. You want to make sure you use the right one, the one with ATM there. And that's temperature in Kelvin. And so then we get to, to the concentrations. Um, this here, uh, you can just ignore it. Um, the, the only thing I did there was I took out like uh, the X in the bottom. And you got an answer that's like, like pretty close, but I think it's always better to do the graphing. Sorry, just looking up the graphs for a second, Jim. Right, number three is using the um wait a minute, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> All right, th this this is the correct number too. Sorry about that. Yeah, so you wanna wanna follow this page um where everything's scratched out. Okay, so the one thing I forgot was the exponent and that that kind of screwed everything up there. All right, so number three, we're using the uh, the same equations, um, but they're giving us different initial information. So this one um, is giving us information about the stuff on the right side of the equation. So uh, I don't like me. Editing that. All right. So, and anyway, it's going from this, that's the reactant to the products. But the, all these um, equations are reversible. That's why they have the double arrow. So, if you're putting stuff in on the right side, it's going to start moving towards the left side. So, that's why you're going to be losing these, where it was, it was the opposite situation in um, number two.
So this is a plus 2x because of the 2 coefficient, minus 2x because of that coefficient there, and minus x here, so you have a invisible 1. And we set up the expressions for the equilibrium. And okay, just a side note, I wrote that a little bit wrong. I was supposed to write like capital P with like lower subscripts. Um, but you get the idea. <laughs> All right, so the graph of this one is weird. So I'm going to switch to that for a second. All right, so I got the... um. these equilibrium expressions over here. And before I was saying, for whatever reason in Desmos, you have to put y equals, doesn't understand if you just put a number. And we actually get three different solutions. You can see the three dots here, this, this, and this. Um, I picked the lowest one. That's not always gonna be what you do, um, but you'll find that if you put any of these other numbers in, it doesn't make sense. So for example, this one says like point four, right? But if you put point four into this equation, this x right here, that becomes zero. We can't have that. Also this one that looks like one. Um trying to see it what the problem with that is. Now it says point one, point one. Um that right here is going to be a problem because that's going to be zero. So it's only this this nine seven three one that makes sense. If you got a few solutions, you want to play around the numbers and, and see if like you get some kind of problem going on. All right, so here's our x value that we computed. And I set this up kind of like in a row here. So we see everything all at once. So I'm going to take the x and plug it into all these expressions here. And that gives us all our partial pressures right here. And I did the same thing with the ideal gas law. So starting with PV equals NRT. I solved for N over V because N over V is the same thing as molarity, which is the concentrations. Um, so I just ran out of room to put some of the units there. So you just want to make sure you have units for the ideal gas constant. There's four of them, LATM over mole K. And then all those 1073s, they're all Ks. And this is just the, uh, yeah, computing them at the bottom. And note how you write concentration, it's always with brackets. All right, moving on. Sorry, it takes a while to sort out. I literally have like 13 different files right here. Uh, this is the one with all the graphs. Okay. This one here was just kind of like an annoying problem because we're doing the same thing three times. Um, we have a pretty simple reaction, 2A going to B. So this is our reactants, that's the pro products. We're starting with this and none of this. And whatever you're starting with, that's the thing you're going to lose. So that's going to be minus 2X. And you're going to gain some Bs, that's going to be plus X. All right, note the expression here. We have a B on top because that is the products and A is squared because of the coefficient. 
I kind of like doing these all the same way, like putting everything in the same place because it's easier to organize like that. So if you notice, these expressions are all the same except for the left, which is the KC. Now we got three graphs. Let's just take a look at one of the graphs. You can see this one has two solutions. Um, it's going up almost vertically because we're way up at 200. Um, but if you were to mouse over this one, you would realize there's a problem with um, negative numbers happening. So I picked the lower of the two. I think I picked the lower of the two for, for each of those. Let's go back to the work here. Okay, so all these X's are determined from the graphs. We can try to run into any problems with zeros or negatives, that kind of stuff. And what you're going to do with those, you're going to plug them back into the expressions. And B is easy. B is just X. So I just took all these numbers and just um, uh, used like sig figs. See this here, I'm not really sure if we have to put that in scientific notation. It does seem kind of silly, but um, sometimes like teachers are sticklers about that. Um, for the A's, I did the expression on the ice table. And then again, put everything into you know, sig figs and scientific notation. You notice everything has sig figs, three sig figs, except like this one appears like it doesn't because um, that's just how it came out. All right, moving on from that one. Five. I ran into a problem with five. So this was giving you information about pressure. So the initial information was this two and this four. And it also told us that we arrived at 1.78 down here. If I had to do this again, I would have probably written this a little differently. Instead of like all these X's, I really didn't need those. Um, I could have just wrote like plus 178 here. And um, because from there, I could easily find out what X is. You just divide 178 by 2 and get 0.89. So that's kind of what I was showing here. As a reference for a similar problem, on the very first page in the notes, um, the bottom table, that's kind of a good example of what's happening. I went over that before with that, like how to divide the um, coefficients and all that. So I got my pressures. I got um, these two and this 178, because it started over zero and ended with 178. So it's actually, it's not a calculation there. Um, These drawing tools, I don't want to do it. Um, I was just going to point out again how I wrote this incorrect, um, this part, because it's KP. So that should really say like P with a subscript of, of CLF, but that doesn't, that doesn't change the calculation. So I just put the pressures in here, got this. I should write ATM on the end of that. Um, But she's asking for the equilibrium concentrations. I don't think we're able to do that with the information given. So I'm pretty sure you need the temperature um, to use the ideal gas law. Either that or she's maybe like using the wrong words. Um, she's done that before. I do that too. Um, so I don't think we could actually find those. And I'm getting there.
All right, six, we got these diagrams. Um, so, all right, the, this is the left side here and the right side here. So, okay, so this one actually set up correctly. That's what the pressures are supposed to look like, what the, the subscripts like that. Um, note the exponents um, and note the numerator and denominator. So numerator is always the products, denominator is the reactants. We started with this initial amount and zero here. So we're gonna be losing those. That's why we have minuses here and pluses on this side. Okay, so it all depends on how it starts. And then I wrote the, the four expressions. So the equal expressions always come from combining the I and the C together. That's the initial and the change. I set this up and I graphed it. Um, I got X equals one. Um, that kind of surprised me, but like this, this problem was designed that way because we had to make a picture. Um, and you could see you could see the intersection in the graph I sent you. Um, so okay, so x is one. We got that. This is two x, and the computations for those. Uh, all these numbers are copied onto the next uh, picture. Yeah, you can see all the same numbers there. Just copied those. And then I looked at the equation, so I saw like A3, and here it's showing three things together, so that must be A. Solid that. And then on 2AB, well, that's probably this guy right here. So B is the open circle. And to make the equilibrium picture, um, it's just a matter of copying the mounts. So... This really, this kind of thing only works if the numbers are designed correctly or else it'd be hard to draw. But note that there are five ATMs of A3, and there's also five of these uh, three atom things. This starts at four of AB, and there's four of these guys. All right, so I use that to model my picture. Only thing is I, I switched to these amounts, so I got a3, I got four of those. I got four here. And AB is two ATM. So that is this one, the open circle with one dot on it. PA is one ATM. The only one of those, so that's this lone guy out here. And then the last one, I got two of those. That's it.